So, you want to make a squad map, and I'm going to show you how. This is going to be a series of tutorials uh, covering everything that you really need to know about how to make a map in the Squad SDK. It's going to go all the way from World Machine all the way down to gameplay layers, so it's going to cover a pretty wide range of topics. But for the most part, it's all going to be stuff that is essential to creating a map, such as foliage, landscape materials, gameplay, height maps, stuff like that. And in this specific episode, which is the first one, we're going to be covering getting your maps for your landscape out of World Machine. So we're in World Machine right now, obviously. And the first thing that I need to mention is the resolution. UE4, for some reason, does not like 4096, 2048, 1024, all that. The resolutions that I know that it, in, it actually agrees with is 4081, 8161, and 2017. And I'm not really sure why, but if you don't use those resolutions, then your height map will either get clipped off or it'll get stretched. And that's not very fun. So when in World Machine, I would go use a custom resolution and set it to one of those. In this case, I have a 4K height map, so I'm going to be setting it to 4081. So now that that's covered, we have some groups here. And I'm going to be going over all this stuff. However, I'm not going to be talking about generating your map. Um, I understand that some people might not know how to use World Machine or might not be comfortable with it yet, but there are a lot of wonderful tutorials out there already made by people much more knowledgeable than I. Um, I believe if you Google World Machine tutorial, there's even a series of tutorials made by the devs themselves, the, the World Machine devs. And on the squad discord in the FAQ channel, there is a link to a video that was made by Iron Taxi, the Offworld Industries dev, where he explains uh, how to create a map in World Machine and how to get into the editor. However, the editor part is a little outdated now, which is why I'm making this series of tutorials. Um, and this is relatively simple. You're probably going to have a lot more stuff here. But basically, where your map generation ends, my tutorial begins. So the first thing that we're going to look at here is this height output. And this height output is our height map. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It's coming straight from the output of the last node in your generation, which in my case is the erosion. It's coming from the height, height map output of the erosion. I just named it heightmap.png. You can name it whatever you want, but I just usually go with heightmap, to be honest. There's no need for anything else than that. It's very self-explanatory. I use PNG because UE4 likes it, and you'd be hard-pressed to find a program that doesn't support it. I use Photoshop myself, and Photoshop plays really nice with PNGs. So that's what I usually use for all my stuff, textures and whatnot. So we also have this grass map thing. And this is where the magic happens. So most of the things that I see people confused about is how splat maps work, what splat maps are, how to make them, what what do they do. So basically, let's just take this select slope for an example. Um, basically, it's selecting all the areas that have a certain slope, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, and any white pixels here, when you bring this into UE4 and you apply it to one of your landscape layers, if a pixel is white, then that pixel on your map will get the layer applied to it. And if it's black, then it won't get the layer applied to it. And if it's somewhere in between, then it'll get like a little bit of the layer applied, like there'll be kind of a, a mix of that layer and whatever layer was under it. So in this case, we have a grass map. And we're selecting from our erosion height map some of the flatter areas of the map, lower angles. Because, you know, grass grows usually on flattish surfaces. Um, and we're also selecting lower heights in our map. Um, and then from that height, we're using that height as a mask for another select slope. But this time we're selecting slightly higher slopes as well. Which basically has 
an effect of putting more grass on the lower areas. I'm not sure why it's not built right now, but you get the idea. Basically, the lower areas have more grass in them than the higher areas do. We also have a blur node right at the end here, and I use this specifically because, hopefully this will build okay. Yes, it does. I use this specifically because if you look here, when we combine everything together, on these select slopes and select heights, I have my fall off set to zero because it's just simpler that way. You don't have to worry about anything. Um, you don't have to worry about it looking fuzzy or anything like that. You combine them all together and then you blur them all together. And I find that that usually achieves uh, a little bit of a better effect uh, in general. It looks nicer. I'm not really sure why, but I like that. And if you look up close, you'll see that it's nicely blurred in. So you're not going to have many sharp edges in your map on the textures, which is a good thing. And then after we blur it, we just output that as a grass map. And it's in the same folder as my other maps as well. And then down here we have our gravel map. Now this is coming not from the height map, but from the flow map of my erosion. And it's the same as all the others, same folder, same everything. But because it's coming from the flow map, you can see here, we got this cool uh, flow map from the erosion. This is kind of subjective. Depending on the terrain of your map or what look you're going for, you might not need the flow map or you might need it. Um, in this case, I'm going to put gravel where my flow map is. I just like the way that it looks that way. Um, now also, it, when you're generating things, your erosion node might not be the last node in your generator. Like when you, when you put together a map and you have a bunch of stuff up here, your erosion might not be the final thing. You might have other stuff that happens after the erosion. So the height map might not be accurate for the flow map. So if, if that's the case, then I, I wouldn't advise that you use the flow map. But in this case, the erosion is the last node in my generate map area. So I'm using the flow map to my advantage. So I'm just going to call it flow map. Uh, it's for gravel, but in this case, I just like to name it flow map because I know what it's going to be for. And you can use the flow map for anything you want. It could be sand, gravel, grass, rocks snow, whatever. You can combine it with other stuff. So I just like naming it flow map. It makes it nice and flexible. Now, after that, we have this whole thing of a jig over here. And it's a bunch of color generators and stuff. Specifically, we have a color generator coming out of our grass map. And this is set to green. So this will show us the green areas where our grass will be. We have a blank color generator that's set to gray, and then we're combining them using the grass because uh, the grass is a mask. And if you look, basically we have the stony areas in gray and the grassy areas in green. And we also have a bluish gray color for our gravel map, which is our flow map, and we're combining that as well and we get sort of a nice color map going on here that allows us to visualize what our final materials will look like in UE4, sort of. Don't rely on this particularly heavily for you know telling you exactly what your map's gonna look like. Obviously, my gravel material isn't going to be this blue. I just colored it that way so that way it can stand out better. But it does give you a good idea of what materials are gonna be you know, applied where, and it also gives you a really good idea of like how pixelated the materials, do they need to be blurred more, you know, is this area too sparse, is this area too lush? It gives you a really good grasp on how your map's going to look roughly. So I like having this little visualized thing set up. And then also once the color map is done, you put it into an overlay view node, which can be found in the output tab right here and you combine it with the height map from your erosion height map bitmap and they combine together and you can check it out in the overlay that's a really useful tool and you should really be using it if you're going to be importing an EV4 
Now, that's pretty much all we have to cover for World Machine. Um, basically, to sum everything up, you have a height map and you have your splat maps. This and this are your splat maps. What a splat map is, it's a black and white image where the white areas receive the material, the black areas don't. So when you apply a splat map to a certain layer of your landscape layers, then the splat map will become basically a template for that layer. In the next tutorial, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth um, into UE4. It's going to be slightly longer than this one, and we're going to talk about getting your height map into UE4 with your splat maps, and we're also going to talk about creating yourself a terrain material. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you continue to.